Uh, <clears throat> well, a favorite memory, I guess, would have to be uh, just going to town when uh, I was small with my dad and my mother. Uh, that was where we went to shop. Uh, Dick Beasley's, Ralph Martin's, Sam Hinton's store. Uh, Drugstore, only time I went there was to get medicine, of course. <laughs> uh, Dr. Hart was our first doctor. He actually made house calls, but uh, sometimes we went to see him in Apex. Uh, that was my first memories. But I guess uh, my favorite memory, and the one that stands out the most, was Hurricane Hazel. I was in the third grade, and it came through about midday. And the principal didn't know what to do, so he sent all the children out to the school bus. And of course, we got drowned. I mean, it was raining like crazy. Wind was blowing. So then he got scared that we couldn't make it home. Then he got us all back into school. And uh, one school building, first through 12th grade, right downtown where the middle school is now. But uh, we all made it back into our classrooms and we huddled up in a corner and I remember looking out the window and seeing brick flying by the window coming off the chimney. And uh, of course it didn't last but an hour and a half or so, two hours, and then it was pretty much over. But the eye came right over Raleigh. And uh, <clears throat> so we went out and got on the school buses and it was of course after school hours. We couldn't leave because they had to wait for volunteers to come to ride the school buses with axes and chainsaws to cut the trees out of the way coming home. So it was a, uh, after dark before I got home that day and uh, we had to stop several times to cut trees out in the way and move the limbs and stuff so the school bus could get by. I reckon that was probably my biggest memory, if not favorite. <laughs> uh, a lot of the memories go way into farming uh, when I was a teenager, we were farming a pretty good amount of land down here, uh, but uh, I was telling the wife this morning, the reason we went to Apex to farm was on the kind of a guy that worked here that lived in Apex. And my dad asked him, said, you know, we need some more land. We got these boys getting out of school, we need more land. Well, he come up with the idea of uh, farming uh, John Duncan's farm. Said it was growing up in weeds. So we went up and looked at it, and sure enough, it was weeds head high. So we run down Mr. Duncan, and we rented the farm from him. And that was the start of us farming in Apex. That is right now where the town hall is. And across the road was the tobacco field uh, where they do the skating and all. So we farmed right there for many, many years and branched out into uh, Bill Goodwin's farm, uh, Marchman farm, and I can't name all of them. We farmed all over Apex. We was at one time tending around 700 acres, uh, keeping a lot of people eating, the older folks that couldn't farm anymore. We was renting their land and uh, keeping them an income coming. So I farmed pretty much all my life until the late eight or mid 80s, I guess. We had to quit farming because of other things that happened uh, and for a living. So I had to go out and do other stuff, but I still farmed land here and uh, my land, other people's land close by to uh, just keep the land up, pay taxes, stuff like that up until 2003. So I pretty much farmed my whole life. Uh, never wanted to do much else. So that's it. Yeah, well, I think the most important memory that I have in Apex is uh, meeting my wife. Uh, farming brought that about. Uh, right here in Fairview, uh, we was uh, farming tobacco, and uh, she grew up right across the creek about two and a half miles. And her dad brought her and her sister over and 
told my dad, William Powell, to, if he could get any work out of them, to pay them a little bit, and if he couldn't, don't pay them. So, <laughs> of course, he paid them. Didn't take long for us to go to noticing one another, I guess you could say. And uh, we married in 1970 and been married now 53 years. And I think that's the most important memory I have. Apex home to me is family. Uh, most of all of my family lived here. Uh, my mother grew up two miles uh, west of Apex. Her name was Jesse Ruth Mills. Claren Mills was her dad, and Lum Mills was her granddad. And I was told by my dad and my granddad that Lum Mills brought tobacco into this country, or either his dad. Now, I can't remember which, but that was the early 1900s or late 1800s. We was farming cotton, or they were in them days. Uh, tobacco came in and, and it kind of took over. Uh, he sold tobacco, actually sold tobacco right there at the warehouse in Apex, uh, and he grew a lot of tobacco. And when my dad married my mother, Jesse Ruth, he didn't have tobacco. He didn't know much about tobacco. So as he was dating my mother, he got to learning about tobacco, and he came down on this place right here where we're sitting and built a tobacco barn right where my house is sitting. And nothing else was here except woods. And he started raising tobacco. And of course, with family, uh, W.C. Mills, Raymond Mills, Talmadge Mills, all of them lived above Apex. So we was a constantly going back and forth with family. And uh, we, of course, get back with the tobacco world, he started getting more and more involved in tobacco. And my granddaddy always came down and helped him cure it and look after it and get him started in it. And then he started building what you see here now. And uh, it all spawned from there. And that's what my important memory is, uh, uh, is being family uh, around Apex. And we're akin to a lot of people here. <laughs> and we actually never left here. We stayed at home. My brothers, uh, pretty much all of my family has never moved anywhere else. They always stayed right here and called Apex home. Not to get too big, not too big too fast. I've been told that a lot of times in my life, and I've seen it happen a lot. Any business that tries to get too big too quick never survives. If Apex will take a small journey, it'll survive. And that's my thought. There was a time when I could listen to the sound of the automobile coming down the road or the pickup truck and tell who it was, we're not even looking. And now, it's just, uh, you know, you don't know anybody. I got friends that come by and blow the horn and all I can say is, well, I go ahead, I don't know you at all because I, I don't know them, you know, because I can't tell one car from another. Uh, I've said this before, we, we didn't go anywhere. We, uh, we had a 10 mile radius of moving around. Uh, I was 16 years old before I ever went to Clayton or Garner. Uh, we played them in football, played Garner, uh, but I didn't know where it was. Uh, and I was 16, I got my license and I drove to Garner to see where it was at. <laughs> and, uh, but we just didn't go anywhere. We was a tight knit community. Uh, uh, my great-grandmother uh, was uh, uh, give the name Fairview Community. When she lived in a, ho a house down at uh, uh, Holly Springs Road and 1010 Highway, and, and Bessie Jones 
which I was kin to, uh, and that would be Cindy's grandmother. Uh, she was the first school teacher that ever come to Fairview when they built the one-room schoolhouse. And she had schooling, and no one, you know, didn't have that much schooling around here in them days. So we're talking the early 1900s. Uh, so there's a chunk of land that was donated to Fairview to put a community building and a schoolhouse on, which actually I found out through uh, other means that that was the third, fourth schoolhouse built in this community. There was three others, and I know where all of them are, but uh, anyhow, she, uh, she said, what are we going to name the schoolhouse? Well, my grandmother was sitting on the front porch, and she said, well, I have a fair view of that schoolhouse sitting right here. So it stuck, Fairview community. And uh, so we went on. Uh, later on, we had, of course, everybody in this community had tobacco and tobacco farm, barns and all, and they were bad about catching on fire. Uh, so we didn't have a fire department. So my dad and uh, William Powell, I'll call his name again, uh, Gene Ogburn, which was Cindy's dad, uh, several other people in the community, I won't call them all by name right now, but they got together with the old community store down at, at, at the crossroads and said we needed a fire department. So somebody knew where there was a weapons carrier at. And so we bought that. And right out there in that shop, they brought it up here. And my oldest brother had been to, to agriculture class and learned how to weld. So him, Marvin Powell, and William Powell, Gene Ogburn, and oh, there were several more. I can't call their names right now. Worked on that fire truck right out there in the shop. So that was our first fire department and uh, built the house, built the fire station down there. And it was kind of funny, everybody wanted to name it Fairview Fire Department. Well, the county wouldn't let us name it Fairview Fire Department because there is a Fairview Fire Department up around Rutherfordton up in the western part of the state. So there couldn't be two in North Carolina. So somebody said, well, the name of that road out there, that road out there, the number, the state number on it is 1010. So let's call it 1010 Fire Department. So that's what they did in the Fairview community. Fairview Fire Department, but 1010 Fire District. So that's where the name of the road came from, 1010 Highway. So I could go on and on, like I say, till dark, but I guess I better stop right there. That's... <laughs>